This is a fourth in a series of videos uh, speaking about webhooks. In the uh, first three videos, we talked about how you can invoke webhooks, very similar to email notifications, to be able to update records in another web service. And in this scenario, we're talking about QuickBase to QuickBase, but you could use it with other web services. Um, you can see I've got a webhook for add contact, I have one for edit contact, and I have one for delete contact. And if you um, got to the uh, delete contact, you saw at the end of that video, I imported um, a whole bunch of records, 100 records by CSV, and guess what? This didn't work. It only created the first one. The other 99 were not mirrored into that second table. Uh, and for the sake of just a quick recap, here's a copy of the webhook that was used for a single transaction. And that's really the key phrase. It's a single record um, action. And it's a QuickBase add record, API underscore add record, and it passes uh, these values of the source table into the fields identified here. And you can see there's an app token that is is inserted in here and there's also a, a user token so we successfully created the add record one and even passed over into a new field into the destination table this field that says source record id um, and then we made that the key field but over at this uh, record id we're passing this record id so we know which record we're talking about uh, when we're adding records, because we're setting this up so that when we edit it, we need to know something about that record we need to edit. Well, we need to know what its source record ID was. So uh, we've added that. So this is the add. We created one for edit, and we also created one for delete. So let's t take another quick look in here at the edit one. It's very much uh, the same. It's taking advantage of this right here. This is the only addition difference from um, add to edit. Okay, now uh, let's back out of here because there's one other one. This delete one is quite a bit simpler. It just says with the same user token and the same app token, it says, you know, the only thing I need to do is, because I'm using API delete record, is the record ID of that field. So uh, that's, that's a very powerful um, thing. But again, it only works on an individual record. So now that I've defined uh, the challenge, how do we um, solve this or make it look, look at it in a different way? This is amazing. Now this is a whole other app, and I've already done this in this application. This is the same. I've got a contact table, and I've got a mirrored table over here. If I add a contact here, it adds a contact here. If I edit, a edit one here or modify, it modifies it here. If I delete it here, it deletes it here. The difference here, uh, and actually I'm going to purge all the data that's in here so you can, you can see list all. And uh, I would like to delete all these records. Delete. OK, close. And let's go over to the contacts. And I want to look at the report list all. I'll say I would like to delete all these. There's nothing in here. Now, these work the exact same way, but we're going to do it with multi-record change, uh, changes. So you'll see there's nothing here, and there's nothing over here now. OK, let's import in a whole bunch of contacts from a spreadsheet. So I'll copy these. And I'll uh, come in and say, I want to import into contacts from a clipboard into contacts the following information, import. We're going to have to do our mapping here. And I'll only take a second. Companies, contact, title. Uh, this is the street one. This is the city one. This is the state. One, this is the postal code, and this is the country. And we have phone. I don't want fax. I want mobile, email, website, lead source. I guess I could bring this in because I have all those fields here. So I'll say import. 100 records were brought in, so let's look at them. Just as you'd expect, we, ha we have them here. Let's go over to Contacts Mirror. 100 contacts were over here. That's uh, 
really awesome. Now, how about if we take the first couple of these? We'll come into, we'll come in here. We'll grid edit. Now, this is a multi-record change. That I'm, I'm suggesting. I'm going to say everybody's a president um, here, and we'll save president. Oh, I, I, I've changed the, the the sorting here. We'll grid edit once again. You can see Acme. All the three of these Acmes all have the same uh, president with fill down. Save. Okay, let's go over to the contacts mirror. That was many records changed. So here we have Acme, 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 president, president, president. That's pretty cool. Now let's do the third one, which is the delete component here. So we grid edit and we delete. You can see it cross. I just hit delete on the keyboard and three, three of these are done. And so all of Acme should be gone. So I go over here to uh, the contacts mirror and notice there's no more Acme. So um, how do these work? These are different than individual record change notifications. These leverage the import by CSV. So we'll look at the three different webhooks in this scenario. I'm not going to create them just like I did in the other one. You'll see this in the add record first video, how to create these. So um, once again, we're going to click on this. I've also added a, a description of, of, of what this, what's, what's happening here. The, the real strong thing here, you're saying I'm going to add records in a destination. Well, we leverage this API import from CSV. Remember, if you import by CSV, you can either create or update records. That's, uh, that's a very powerful thing to think about uh, for a second because you have many, many records. How does it figure out each one as it does it? It uses this repeat on and repeat off. If you look at the API import from CSV, and let's go take a look at that just for a second, API, and you can do a Google search to find this import from CSV. Down below, you're going to find examples of how this, how this actually looks. So all I did was I copied this right out of here and pasted it in, uh, in there. And now this has got text in it. So you can see the header is first done. Notice there's no comma after the zip code, and then it starts into the data. Bruce, well, this is where I've got field values. And since this one gives us each one of these, and I don't have that uh, benefit of import from CSV, um, so when I do import from CSV, I've got this streaming uh, um, query um, and or from this um, file that's happening on this table. So I need to turn on uh, repeat on, repeat off. And here's an example, other request for adding records, uh, sample, add new records. There's a whole bunch of information in here. But anyway, let's come back over. And we will look at this once again. So we have some import data that's coming in and it's turning it on, it's iterating through the values, and you can see uh, uh, the values, and then it says repeat off, and then it repeats on. For every row that's imported, it does what it's told. It's importing from CSV. Now, the company record, or field rather, is this one here, which is field six, and then this is field seven, and this is field eight, and then this is field 27, and, and, and so forth. And you can see how they align themselves down below here. So we're importing here whenever a contact is added, which is really powerful. So let's exit out of here for a sec. Let's look at the uh, second one. And you're going to not be surprised, perhaps, the, the modify one it speaks the same language. Remember, if you import by CSV and you find the record ID, it says, hey, if I find the value, I'll, I'll update it for you. And once again, it's repeat on and repeat off. And these are the fields that it fills in. Pretty cool. Notice this one has that source record ID in there, which is great. 
that's the record ID of the original record is memorialized over there so it knows which one to update. All righty, let's go back. Now there's one other one, which is delete. Delete isn't done with API delete, it's done with API purge records. And if you look under the API, you'll find API purge records and it goes through and shows you what's necessary. Now we already have this, we already have this, which we're using a uh, user token instead of a ticket. That's defined under the first video you'll see. And then there's the app token and it really, here's the query ID, uh, query ID 10. And so let's take a look at what that is. Uh, so we'll come, we'll come out of here, go back over here to this app here. And, and so this is where I can put, instead of a query ID, I can actually say where field 34 equals the record ID of the parent. This is really powerful. Now the repeat on and repeat off, repeat on and repeat off are, are here. Here it is right here, repeat on. Um, so I've got where uh, 34 equals the record ID or 34 uh, equals the record ID. I don't know why I've got this duplicated here. Uh, it isn't necessary to have it duplicated in here. But uh, it, it iterates through um, the uh, records that are purged. So that's uh, taking it from the original application that we looked at, which was a single record change, single record change for add, edit, and delete. And we moved into using a more sophisticated uh, method, which is import. Now, import from CSV works exactly uh, um, as the add, um, edit, and delete version. So in, in my takeaway here, and you may have use cases for the individual uses, that's fine, but the import is more global. It allows you more flexibility. So I, I, I probably would gravitate to that method unless you've got a very narrow use case. So that concludes the fourth of a series. Uh, hope you uh, pop into some of the customization webinars that are available and listed online. Have a great day.